When Jesus began his earthly ministry, he gathered around him 12 ordinary, uneducated, rough and tough, ragtag band of followers. They, there was nothing outstanding about them. Natural talents or abilities. They weren't renowned for their scholarly works. They had no track record of public speaking or seminary training. These were regular guys, full of mistakes, misstatements, wrong attitudes, lapses of faith, and bitter failures. They were perfectly ordinary guys in every way. Real, living characters that I believe each of us can identify with. With their faults, their failures, their triumphs and tragedies, These 12 were hand-selected by Jesus to carry his message to the ends of the earth. And I want to walk you back how it all began. Look at Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 22. You heard this message this morning. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. So I want you to see what's going on right here. At the beginning of Jesus' ministry, as he's calling his disciples, he calls these four guys and says to them, I'm going to follow me, and I will pour my life into you. I will teach you, I will disciple you, and I will make you something that you currently are not. And so subsequently called the other eight, and these 12 men spent three years with Jesus. He taught them, he discipled them, he gave them all in the job training, and how they were to live as his disciples, where they would live, work, learn, and play. We're beginning a new sermon series today called Everyday Spaces. And what it's going to be is taking a look at the next four weeks of how we as followers of Jesus can live as followers of Jesus in the different spaces of our lives. And so after Jesus called those 12 disciples, he worked with them for three years, he went to the cross, he died, he resurrected, giving us power of sin, death, and the evil one, he gave them a mission. It's actually called the Great Commission. It's in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. Now, you're welcome to open your Bibles, especially if you're sitting on the far sections. You may not be able to see them, so just don't fall asleep back there, all right? I'm, I think I can barely see you, Paul Davis. I don't even know where he is. I have to call him out every once in a while just to make sure he knows and he knows I'm watching. Yeah, some of y'all get that. Matthew 28, 19 to 20, Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the ends of the age. And so what's Jesus saying before he enters into heaven is he's telling his disciples, his followers, us, I'm inviting you into a mission that will literally change the world. That can literally change the course of someone else's life for eternity. And it's this invitation from Jesus that he's telling us to go. Sending us by his authority and with his spirit to offer hope to a broken world. And I can't imagine a better time and place to be doing that right 
Now, to be used by God through the power of the Holy Spirit, redeemed by Jesus Christ, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. To be God's I love you to people who have been beaten up, torn apart, told how worthless they are, who are being made fun of, begin to believe they're just part of the world's injustice, pain, and suffering. People who have been told and believe a lie that their life really doesn't matter. To bring hope to people who are facing hurts and struggles, shattered dreams, broken promises, people who need purpose and new life. This congregation is not unfamiliar with this phrase, blessed to be a blessing. In Genesis 12, 2, God told this to Abram. He said, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. So from the beginning of time, God told Abram, I will bless you so that you will be a blessing to others. God's strategy for reaching and restoring in the world is simply to have his people bless the world. Blessed to be a blessing. So I'm praying you can connect the dots with me. Jesus calls the 12, trains them, educates them, gives them on-the-job training, and then he sends them out in the world to be a blessed, to be a blessing. And so what does that look like for us here at Glory Day? You know, every time I hear the word evangelism, I run. You know, I was, uh, when I was trained in the seminary to be a, a cold caller, you know, to knock on people's doors, and I had my, my outline all memorized, scared to death, and I was going to knock on the door, you know, and you, you're going to go to talk to somebody you don't even know, and you're going to tell them all about Jesus. I will be honest, you know, you're supposed to stand there on the front porch and pray, for a great conversation, you know what my prayer was? Lord, help him not be home. <laughs> I was a nervous wreck. I'm not a fan of cold calling because I don't have permission to be in your space. I don't know you, you don't know me, you don't know why I'm there. I, don't, I think it's ineffective. And so what I want you to hear in the next four weeks is how do we redeem the time and the spaces that we are already living to be those who are blessed to be a blessing? Because every one of us has a handful of everyday spaces of life where we live, where we work, where we learn, where we play, where we gather. Y'all even have spaces here in the church. I mean, we lit, we're four weeks in the chapel and you haven't forgotten where you sit. You went right back. Well, some of y'all are messing with me this morning. I see y'all a couple of different places. <laughs> but these spaces are areas in our lives where we know people, where we love people, our homes, where we work, our friends, our colleagues, those familiar faces, where we gather, where we play. And it's in those spaces that God places us strategically and intentionally to be his hands and feet for those in our communities, to show them God's love, grace, and acceptance in Jesus Christ, to be a blessing for them. So the mission that Jesus invited us to in Matthew 28, when he said go, 
He said, as you are going, spread the news that moral failures can be made right with God. Spread the news that sinners can find grace and forgiveness through the cross of Christ. Spread the news that men and women can be reconciled to God and to one another. And as you do that, I'm going to be with you. And so rather than trying to overcomplicate things, I want you to think about this morning and for the next three weeks following this series about your daily routines, where you find yourself regularly living, and the people that are around you that you call friends. The first space, where we live. How are you blessed to be a blessing where you live? Maybe that's the first place we need to start. As a spouse, how are you blessing your spouse? As a parent, how are you blessing your kids? As a kid, how are you blessing your parents? Where we work, ooh, this is a hard one. Because there are some of you stories I've heard, it's not acceptable to speak Jesus in your place of work. It's not acceptable to show a cross. It's not acceptable to serve in a Christian community. So how can you, where you work, be a blessing to other people as you live out the grace and love of Jesus Christ? For our students, their work is where they learn. We're getting ready to send them back to school. There are kids in their classes, students, there are kids in your classroom who are sitting probably right next to you who need to know that they are a blessing. There's a teacher in your classroom that needs to have hope, who's struggling with things you have no idea about. Where we play. Think about the times, places we play, the gym, the golf course, the different groups or clubs you belong to, that bunco group, that sewing club, that, the driving range, the shooting range, wherever it may be, where you play, wherever you find yourselves with familiar faces in community. And then there's that other space where you just happen to be gathered with others. You're not quite sure who they are. I love my wife went up with my daughter Caroline to A&M for the new student conference. She's heading off to college in a few days, a few weeks. And um, she was with a group of people, people and parents, and all of a sudden some, there was a group of people there together, and there was a lady that just kind of was with Carissa. And before I knew it, they struck up conversation. And then they went to the next activity together, and then she said, can can we have lunch together? And then all of a sudden, she said, hey, do you mind if we pray? And then my wife said that, and the lady said, yeah, can I pray? And she prayed. And she said, oh, by the way, i got to tell you, I'm a pastor's wife. How did God arrange this pastor's wife to be having lunch with my wife in community at, in College Station at New Student Conference. You see, God puts us in places with people at various times, and all it requires is to have a conversation. To walk into the space, rather than thinking how you're going to get ahead of everybody, how can you be a blessing to everybody? What would it look like And how would your demeanor and attitude change if you walked into work tomorrow and said, man, don't say it out loud, but you're thinking, I'm going to be a blessing to the people in my work today, even the ones I can't stand, especially the ones I can't stand. And watch how your attitude and demeanor change that you're now blessed so you can be a blessing to others. I want you to think about this. Jesus Jesus loved hanging out with people, and he didn't hang out with the church folks, y'all. They caused him grief. 
who hung out with sinners and tax collectors and common ordinary people, people who didn't have it all together, people who were struggling. And he watched and he listened, he shared stories and he, and he shared life. He was ne- and it, I, Jesus had three years and an incredible mission and somehow he was never in a hurry. I don't get that. I guess he didn't have a smartphone, you know, and he didn't have an administrative assistant telling him where to go. I don't know. But when the moment eventually came for him to share good news about Jesus or about God, it was amazing the conversation took place because they knew he was there out of love for them. Hanging out, spending time, Enjoying people was Jesus. It was almost like a secret weapon for winning the world to his father. It sounds almost too easy. But you can't dismiss the result. In fact, you can look at Luke chapter 10, and you can see 10 different times where Jesus had a meal with people, and it was transformational. What was he doing? In the everyday spaces, he was... Blessed to be a blessing. What's amazing is as easy as it is, as difficult as we try to make it and fearful that we become. So for the next four weeks, we're going to share with you a tool. And I pray, I'm still working through this tool myself. It's, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me completely because it's too easy. Um, there's a, a resource we have called the Bless Rhythm. I'm going to ask our slide guys to put that up on the... Some of you may have seen this. I shared it with our leaders. This is a way in which we can be a blessing to those around us in the areas where we live, work, learn, play, and gather. And there's a simple acronym of BLESS. It starts off with a B is that you begin with prayer. In the spaces and places where you're going to go today, next week, the tomorrow, begin with prayer for those people that you're among. Can you not pray that there might be spiritual curiosity in someone at your work or in your gathering? Lord, give me that opportunity. God, where are you already working and help me join you in that mission? The L, listen. As God is revealing to you who to talk to, it is amazing what happens when we listen to people. When you're at work and someone is complaining about whatever, instead of like trying to up them with your complaints, yeah, you think your life is bad, let me tell you about mine. Why don't you just sit back and listen and hear what they are saying? You see, it's amazing. Before we can tell people about Jesus, we need to hear about their struggles first. Before we can be a blessing to them, one of the major things we can do is just listen to them. There are so many people who speak a lot but are never heard. What if we would lay down our assumptions? And what if we would listen with curiosity rather than what they're saying is wrong or that you have a better solution? What if you actually started listening to people with curiosity to find out what what are they struggling with? Where are they coming from? What are they really seeking? The E, oh, that's a good one, eating together. Jesus modeled it. In fact, Luke says the Son of Man came eating and drinking with sinners. He came to seek and to save the lost, but he also came eating and drinking. Is there somebody at work that needs a cup of coffee? Is there somebody in your neighborhood that you could take to the local coffee shop? I mean, they're popping up all over the place around here. Is there a place that you regularly visit where you live, work, learn, and play that you can offer a meal? Hey, 
can we just gather for a potluck? It sounds silly, I know. The second of the S, serve. Think about it, if you've been praying for a spiritual conversation, listening to the struggles of these people, having a meal together or over coffee, you're gonna find out ways that you can serve this individual. And you would be a blessing to them by following through and serving them. And as you do those four letters, guess the, the second S is share your story. What does the hope and love of Jesus Christ mean to you? And it doesn't have to be some memorized outline. It doesn't have to be some kind of regurgitated thing you know. What does Jesus mean to you? How have you been blessed by Jesus? How has Jesus made a difference in your life? You see, our life can be a living testimony to the things that we hold most dear. We love talking about our family. We love talking about our kids. What if we have the opportunity to love talking about Jesus? So as you are going, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, Jesus said, therefore go. Go and make disciples. You are blessed. I am blessed to be a blessing. Let's live it, y'all. In the name of Jesus, to God alone be the glory. Amen.